Hello, this is David Taylor Klaus, and welcome to Mindset Mondays with DTK. This is episode 45. So here's what I'd love to ask you. If you will take just a moment and click share, there's a share button just underneath this video. If you'll invite your community, share this broadcast, invite your friends, your colleagues, your Facebook friends to join the conversation. Would love to have more voices part of our community. And again, Mindset Mondays is part of a year-long program, weekly live broadcast designed to help those folks with a growth mindset and those who'd like to create one play with new ideas, new concepts, and try on new mindsets. So with that said, here's what we're playing with today. One who has committed a mistake and doesn't correct it is committing another mistake. Yes, I had to edit it. This is Confucius, and he was not uh, gender neutral language aware. So the original quote is man who has committed one mistake and doesn't correct it is committing another mistake. So yes, I edited it. <laughs> so the, the, this is a rich concept. The, it sort of puts me at odds with two different ideas because no, I don't like making mistakes. I know that that's you know, giving up a rich learning playground that learning comes from failure, yet failure is so uncomfortable. And I, uh, I don't enjoy the mistake in the moment. I don't enjoy the mistake shortly thereafter. It takes reframing, totally being honest, to get to a point where I'm comfortable with having made the mistake because I can attach it to the learning that comes from it. But the playground here is about not compounding the damage. You know, the kids in our house have grown up with a concept of do stupid smart. You know, if you make a mistake, or you're going to do something stupid. Don't double down. Don't compound it. And the issue here is when you make a mistake, own it. Identify it, own it, apologize make amends, make the overture, repair bid, and move on. The That challenge is pausing, owning it internally, and being able to declare it. And oh, it's so uncomfortable. Like I still have this visceral aversion to admitting the mistakes, right? Once I admit it to myself even, not even to the world, once I admit it to myself, it's real. Can't hide it, can't shy away from it can't rationalize it. You know, you can't sweep it under the rug and make it go away. You have to address it. And once addressed, you get to learn from it and move on. You know, mistakes are an inevitable part of living. Handling mistakes is a totally different story. You know, we learned through the one of the leadership development programs that I've been part of that Leaders make mistakes. The difference is leaders also clean up those mistakes. And how do you navigate your mistakes? How do you be with, or how well do you be with the mistakes that you make in your world? You know, when a, the, I, I can't pronounce Coach Mike's last name. He's the Duke University basketball coach. Um, like K, hey, I can't even pronounce the last name without butchering it. But his flavor of this is when a leader makes a mistake and doesn't admit it, it's seen as arrogant and untrustworthy. And untrustworthy is the last thing that a leader wants to be. It begins to erode trust. So again, when a leader makes a mistake and doesn't admit it, it's seen as arrogant and untrustworthy. You know, we can't admit mistakes. We can't admit we were wrong. It makes those around us uncomfortable as well. And they begin to see things through a filter of, is that a, was that a mistake? Is that something this person's going to own? And it just destroys relationships. Sherry Strideoff, um, she wrote the book, The Everything Great Marriage Book, or co-authored it with her husband. Um, she's got four steps that she plays with. And I'll, I'll put this into the, the video chat thread. First one is assume responsibility. If you made a mistake, tell the truth. Don't put the blame on anyone else. 
don't deflect it. Don't try to hide it or pretend it didn't happen. Just assume responsibility. Okay. Next one is accept the consequences for the mistake. You know, realize that your partner or colleague may be annoyed or upset, but being honest about making the mistake will begin to diffuse the other person's or other people's anger. Right? And then make it right. right? Fix it, clean it up, do what it takes to correct that mistake. And although you can't change the past, you can avoid making the same mistake again in the future. So learn from the mistake. But again, it's assume responsibility, accept the consequences for your mistake, make things right. And the last step, ask for forgiveness. Be sincere and honest. Don't play the game. Don't play a role. Say, please forgive me. Saying you're sorry isn't enough. And you, you, you can't expect the other person to just get over it immediately. But here's the other piece of the for, ask for forgiveness. Forgive yourself too. Right, and that can really be the hard part. In fact, it can often be easier to ask the other for forgiveness than to forgive yourself. The concept of atonement or forgiveness in Judaism with Yom Kippur, the, one of the high holidays, the Day of Atonement, is that you know I was taught that real atonement isn't achieved until when presented with the opportunity again, you choose something different. In other words, you don't make the same mistake. So yes, you can assume responsibility. Yes, you accept the consequences. And yes, you make the repair bid and do what's necessary to make it right. And you ask for forgiveness. And asking for the forgiveness is only half. When faced with the same situation again, acting differently, that's where the real atonement, that's the next level of forgiveness. You know, <laughs> asking for forgiveness doesn't just erase the damage or preclude you from learning anything. In fact, quite the opposite. It kind of demands that you learn from it. So I like, you know, I mean, you, you talk so much about being present and I see her in your comment that uh, takes a moment of slowing down to see the many possibilities the mistake is opening up and apologizing and taking 100% responsibility. But that being still, slowing down, being willing to pause and look at the mistake. That's a key piece, being present to what's happened, what you've done, what's gone on, being present to the impact, looking for the learning, looking for, looking for the possibility. And that is a key piece. There is so much possibility in every mistake. The learning is the rich opportunity. So what comes up for you as we, as we walk this playground of mistakes? and living your mistakes. What, what comes up for you? And as I promised, I will put into the thread the, the comments from Sherry Strideoff, because I think those four steps for navigating mistakes um, are really a blessing. It's the opportunity to move on in a way that serves. Right? It's a way for us to actually grow from the mistakes. <laughs> yeah, this is one of those, as we come up to the end of the year, the other piece to look at around forgiveness is, you know, most of us have set goals for 2018 and <laughs> with 14 days left in this year. You know, it's the time to look back at the goals you've set and the progress you've made or haven't made and be objective and be fair in assessing your progress. Celebrating the wins and forgiving yourself for the mistakes and the shortcomings. So being patient enough and still enough to look inward and to assess and then 
to make an effort to fix those mistakes and ask for forgiveness. And again, asking for forgiveness from yourself is huge. One of the mistakes I know that I make is setting unreasonable goals. And I pause there because, you know, I do believe that no significant goal is ever reached without aiming for one higher. So I always have, you know, my target and the visionary goal beyond it, the absurd goal, the big, hairy, audacious goal, the aiming for things that are almost, if not impossible. And when I hold my ideal goal, my target goal, the reasonable one as an unreasonable goal, that's not fair. It's a delicate balance because I believe we have to shoot for the improbable. We have to shoot high because God knows the worst thing we can do is set our aim low and then reach it. And yet when we make even the most basic goals impossible, it's kind of cruel. Because, you know, you hear me talk about all the time about success begets success and <laughs> and celebrating the small wins so that you have thing you have wins and victories to build on. <laughs> but where's that balance between setting a goal, a visionary goal that's high enough to inspire you, and having reasonable goals that can be, even though they require incredible stretching, can still be achieved. And I don't know what the answer is. I don't know what that sweet spot middle ground. I think that's the art when it comes to the art and science of setting goals. I think that's the art part. Um, learning yourself enough to know you're setting achievable goals that require a stretch and still holding that visionary goal <laughs> and not setting your sights low and just meeting them. This is a fun one for me to dance with, and, and hopefully it is for you, is trying to navigate realistic goals and stretching and that visionary blow the doors off idea. It, it, and there's no reason that we can't be this introspective or you know, pushing ourselves to towards that reflective intelligence throughout the year. It's something about, I think, the cold weather the end of the calendar year, getting us to think differently. And so I encourage you this week to play with the ideas of how are you setting goals and play with looking at the mistakes that have been made and how are you addressing them? Where are the things that are there for you to own and the things that are there for you to accept the consequences and make that repair bid and ask the other and yourself both for forgiveness. This is a perfect time of year to make those assessments. It is never too late to acknowledge a mistake. It is never too late to apologize and make a repair. It is never too late to ask for forgiveness. So as you look forward into this next week, what mindset will you choose? 